we're, we're now going to go into uh, what we think of as the high order bits, the, the fast keynotes uh, uh, that um, uh, will take us in deeper into the conversation that we started before the break. Um, and our first speaker, uh, it was a great pleasure for me this spring uh, to almost every morning uh, on my way into my office uh, to get to pass and say hello uh, to Susan Crawford, who is, um, I, I think, uh, you will come to know her as the Elizabeth Warren of telecom. Uh, she is currently a, a visiting professor at Harvard Law and uh, at the Harvard Kennedy School. Um, and she is here to talk to us uh, about the subject of her new book, which is called Captive Audience, Telecom Monopolies in the New Gilded Age. Uh, I give you Susan Crawford. Thank you, Thank you. Hello, everybody. So what makes for a good drama? An idealistic person stuck in a non-idealistic setting where the stakes are very high and there's a tick-tock of time. We've got that with the telecommunication story in America. And you've got me as an idealistic person. The book, Captive Audience, tracks what's going on in America and has happened over the last 10 years that's led us to a world in which we have entrenched monopolies, one on the wired side, just the cable companies, and on the wireless side, just Verizon and AT&T, where they see most of their profits. And America's being left behind. So that's the tick-tock. China's going to have 300 million people on fiber to the home, or they say they will, by 2015. Netherlands already has this. Australia is planning a fiber to the home network for 93% of its citizens, launching right now. What's the United States? We've got a second class monopolistic wired network, some wireless access which will never substitute for a fast wire. When we could be looking to a future of multiple connected devices in the home, real time video conferencing for health and education and everything else America needs, and a world of cloud-enabled transform transformative uh, applications, including all the democratic gathering that we care about and have advanced the internet. So I'm with this presentation, I'm dragging you a bit down into the dirt, the wires. What we all depend on is internet access, and we are in a real fix when it comes to internet access in America. It's really the baby boomers' fault. They were bored with the idea of utilities and regulated industries. They believed in the pixie dust of deregulation and private markets bringing all possible goods to society. Now the stakes are really high because, as it turns out, all the assumptions on which we made telecommunications policy in the last 10 years, all of this deregulatory fervor, has led us to a world of enormous concentration with no oversight, no oversight on either the wired or wireless side. And as I said, the stakes are getting high because the phone system, the traditional universal phone system that binds us together as a country, is going away. Right now, right now, a third of Americans have already given up on their landline phone service uh, in, you know, in favor of wireless. And Neither Verizon nor AT&T wants to be in the wired, regulated wired business that requires them to serve everybody, requires them to do so with non-discriminatory pricing and openness, all the things that made the internet possible. They're running away from that business because Wall Street does not want them there. It's too expensive to replace those copper phone wires with fiber. So they're giving up on wires and exiting their regulatory responsibilities as fast as they can already in several states, and we're going to see more of that. If you think about it, telecommunications is just a utility. It's just like water or electricity. It's this fundamental substrate, this thing on which all of our industries depend. And yet we're giving up on that obligation when it comes to landline phone. What are we going to replace it with? How are we going to make sure that every American is part of the 21st century? What's the social contract? That's our big question. Do we believe that every American should have access to high-speed, wired internet access at a reasonable cost? Other countries and most of the Western developed world believes this. In fact, sort of can't believe that we've given up on it. Imagine America without clean water for everyone. 
Imagine America without electricity for everybody. Did you know that electricity was privately provided in the United States way up into the 20s? And that left out much of Americans, it, uh, the electrical companies. It was in their industry to serve large businesses and rich people. Everybody else got left out. And as a matter of industrial policy, we decided that was a bad idea. That's why all of us have electricity now. It's not a luxury. It's just foundational. When it comes to telecommunications, we haven't taken that step. We're still seeing it as a luxury, something that not everybody gets access to when it comes to wired internet access. That's a problem. What is our social contract? The book, Captive Audience, writes a lot about the looming cable monopoly. It's not exactly looming anymore. It's actually happening. Um, we're seeing that almost all new high-speed wired subscriptions coming in are going to the local cable incumbents. They long ago stopped competing with one another. They actually divided up the country. You take Minneapolis, I'll take Sacramento. And maybe that makes sense. This service, it may make sense to only have one wire into a home. They saw that. They saw that competition was just going to be ruinous, and so they consolidated. And now they're snapping up all uh, high-speed wired uh, subscriptions. Verizon and AT&T, on their side, have a lot of power on the wireless marketplace. And we saw in December 2011 the cooperation taking place as Verizon signed up with Comcast and Time Warner. We used to think these guys compete. They can't compete. Wireless will never substitute for this fast wire. And so they're working together, providing Americans with vast, expensive, impenetrable bundles of connectivity and programming. But they, because they have no oversight, they can raise prices, they can cherry pick, they can decide who gets water, in essence, and who doesn't. And meanwhile, fully a third of Americans don't have wired high-speed internet access. And we're nowhere near moving to the gig symmetrical access up and down that other countries are going to take for granted. The cable plant simply physically, as it is now, can't be upgraded to give you a gig upstream. The most it has available to it now is about 150 megabytes upstream. Think about that, all of you content producers. Think of America left unable to upload its own creativity, its own products and services to the rest of the world. That's what, where we'll be without fiber. But these companies, they're not bad. This isn't evil. There's no morality attached to this. This is about a, what the incentives are for a private company. Privately held company that's serving its shareholders is always going to want to harvest its market power and not expand. That's where we are now with both wires and wireless. And it's a real problem. So uh, Comcast, we're already seeing uh, enormous um, upticks in average revenue per user. That means that they're able to reap the rewards of market power in the markets they control. And it's a great investment. They're plowing back huge amounts into dividends and buybacks for their shareholders, keeping their share price going up. They really have an unchallenged dominance, unchallenged dominance in wired high-speed access for America. Verizon's file service could compete. In fact, it's a better service. It's symmetrical. But it's available to only 14% of Americans. And Verizon is not going to be expanding. Wall Street hates it when they build more fiber. So good for Comcast. Uh, DSL, which used to be thought of as competitive with cable modem service, is now a legacy service. It's just people are abandoning it in droves. And all of those subscriptions are going to the cable actors, gathering market power, hanging on to wired dominance. Every wireless network is 95% a wire. And those wires are going to be controlled by the cable actors in America. The margins for these two sets of monopolies are incredible. Credit Suisse said earlier this year that Comcast and Time Warner have something like 93% plus margins for their high-speed wired service. It's a gravy train. It's just they can make a lot of money from this, and they're not expanding. So they just keep reaping the rewards. Margins are much higher for them there than they are in video. Same thing on the, Ver on the Verizon Wireless and AT&T Wireless side. High margins for those service. They're doing terribly in wires. They're backing away from the wires. And what's happening to all that money? All that profit is being plowed back into dividends and buybacks, keeping the share price up. 
So what about the rest of us? What about the idea of every American having access to a reasonably priced fiber connection as other developed nations are doing? We don't at this point have an upgrade path. There's no upgrade path in policy that would get us to what we need as a country. We've got to fix this. So there are five big myths you have to help me combat. One is that wireless is going to solve everything. Not true. Basically, also you need a fiber for that wireless to work. There are some cool apps. That's great. But you have to look down in the dirt at the fundamental question of internet access. And apps aren't going to fix that. You're a socialist, Marxist, radical, crazy person. No, not true. Uh, actually, it turns out that we just need, uh, this is what all Americans need. It's in our shared interest to make sure that as a country, we have the social fiber and trust to move forward. No one needs, really needs a gig. We'll tell that to the other countries that are going in this direction, who are going to use the medical and health and uh, educational resources that we won't have. It's too expensive. We can't do anything. Not true. We can drive costs down by having uh, more people get access to this service with oversight. So just three steps. We've got to support municipal networks. That's where a lot of the adventurous stuff is happening. Seeing that with Chattanooga. We're also seeing the Google network, which is alternative fiber network. Watch the role of private equity. Private equity companies are actually snapping up fiber around the country because they want to get the money out of it to pay back their debt and not expand. So we'll have to watch for that. But help uh, municipal fiber networks make sure that access is a utility. This is a multi-year battle, but we will get there. And this should be part of all open internet movements is an open fiber, high connectivity movement. Uh, we've got to pay attention. We need better graphics than I've got, better news coverage, better numbers, better consumer stories, more movies, uh, phalanx of credible economists. This should be an election issue in every congressional district. Ask good questions about fiber access in your district. And Australia is going to become pretty relevant here because cheap fiber access will transform our economy, drive future growth and productivity, and lead to new innovative developments. Cable executives will say to you, that would be so disruptive, <laughs> right? Well, yes, it would be disruptive. But this cutover to the idea of uh, access as a utility is essential for us as a country. America has a very good broadband story. Ivan Seidenberg <laughs> wrote to the Times, someone just needs to tell it. I'm telling you, we're in trouble. We're in a terrible fix at this point. So in sum, just as you wouldn't want to see your neighbor's house burned down because they hadn't paid a private firefighter, so you shouldn't want to see most of America left without adequate access to be nationally competitive. There will be enormous benefits to the entire country for taking this stuff step. The market won't provide it, and the market won't function without it. This is a bipartisan issue. And the phone system is going away. Thank you very much.